Hi out there, this is Alice of Creative Expressions Arts coming to you from the Cultural Arts District of Noblesville, Indiana. I'm also a member of the Poetry Society of Indiana, a juried artist in the Hamilton County Artists Association, and president of Community Education Arts, which is a nonprofit arts organization based in Noblesville. I'm also an artist member of Nickel Plate Arts, and today I wanted to share with you three poems that are in Nickel Plate Arts 2021 exhibit Love, Lust, and Poetry in January and February 2021. First up, I have a golden shovel poem for you. Now, a golden shovel poem is a poetic form uh, that was devised by American poet Terence Hayes in 2010 in homage to Gwendolyn Brooks. In a golden shovel poem, the last words of each line in the new poem are, in order, words from a line or lines taken from another poet's poem. My poem is Paradise after Paradise Lost by John Milton. What could be more sweet, what better, than hearing your voice whisper to me during the darkest night's rain, when full sorrow has taken me in, when the only light is the fire of hell, when I cannot breathe in or out, then you, coming with a whisper to serve salvation to my soul, whisking me away in your golden embrace, my paradise, my heaven. This also is an example of an ekphrastic poem. Ekphrastic poems explore, engage with, or describe any form of visual art. I paired this poem with uh, my painting, Big Sun. The next poem I have for you is also ekphrastic. Let me move my little thing over here so we're not in the way. Um, okay. This one's called Force of Nature. The painting was done first. The poem was inspired by the painting. The painting was actually inspired by a photograph taken by a friend of mine on his travels in Ireland. And in Ireland, there are a lot of areas along coastlines where the wind is so powerful that trees and bushes uh, grow in a windswept formation. And I was so struck by that that I painted this painting inspired by his photo. The poem came after um, I painted the painting and then um, right around the same time there was the whole like scandal and political uh, 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 <laughs> you know um, shenanigans with the nevertheless she persisted statement that was made in Congress and um, I was very struck by that statement it really burrowed itself into me because it made me think of people like Eva Kors and Shirley Chisholm and you know, so many women throughout time and space, geography, who have, you know, struggled against obstacles and um, whether they're personal obstacles or public obstacles or whatever. And it also made me think of people in my own family, uh, my Macedonian grandmother, my Baba, who traveled from Macedonia with two tiny children on the last ship out uh, the last passenger ship out of Europe uh, for the duration of World War II. She didn't speak a word of any language except Macedonian, and she traveled through Italy, across the ocean, and from Ellis Island to Oregon, where her husband uh, awaited them. Um, and I also thought about myself and other women who have survived uh, some sort of abu abuse or trauma, in my case, domestic abuse, but um, and I also thought about people like me who have um, physical health challenges that kind of beat them down. And so that's where this poem came from. It's kind of personal and at the same time it has kind of a universal message it's called Force of Nature. She was warned by the winds that beat her. She was warned by the sun that cracked her. She was warned by the rains that eroded her. She was given an explanation by the tempestuous gods above her. Nevertheless, she persisted as a force of nature uncontrolled. I'm not really sure how some people might think that fits into love, lust, and poetry, but um, it's kind of been a tradition with the Nickel Plate Arts exhibit that the love, lust, and poetry exhibit can reflect kind of the the negative side of um, the love part. So maybe getting out of bad relationships or rising um, above and beyond uh, challenges and things like that. So I did include this in my submissions and they accepted it. So yay. 
Um, and then my last one is a fairly simple poem. It's based, it's, it's inspired, it's also ekphrastic. It's inspired by my original photograph that you can see here of uh, one of the red roses that grows in my garden. And um, this, this poem is uh, kind of literally about love. It's, it's, it's positives and negatives, but ultimately um, how your, your true love shines through. It's called She Blooms. She blooms like no other. From within the greenest leaves and thorns protecting, I breathe her in, a sweetness overwhelming, cloying and dancing, a torrid delight, straining like pulp through damp and sickening air. Yet she blooms like no other, my red summer rose. So you have to think of the rose and the she as being um, a love. Uh, and uh, I was thinking in terms of, you know, the humidity and, you know, the kind of unpleasant weather in the summer and how out of that you get this gorgeous, gorgeous flower. Um, so out of all the things that can challenge true love, uh, if you work at it and if you live through it, you've got, you've got that red summer rose that's so beautiful. So thank you for letting me share my poetry with you today. I look forward to seeing you sometime again. This is Alice signing off.